Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted this morning to have as my guest is Jane Cunningham. She is the Director of European Engagement for a marvellous organisation called Destinations International. Uh, she's actually sitting at her home in Sweden at the moment, although she doesn't have a Swedish accent. So good morning, Jane. Uh, hey, good morning. Uh, no, yes, good morning. I do not have a Swedish accent. Still very Scottish, even though years and years out of Scotland. But uh, nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me to chat with you. Good. Jane, I'm not sure everybody knows what Destinations International does. I mean, I'm very, obviously very familiar with it. it. does some exceptional good work with uh, destination marketing organisations around the globe. Your emphasis is on Europe. Perhaps you can just explain, you know, in, in a couple of sentences, what Destinations International is and what its goal is. Yeah, well, Destinations International is a trade association and it's there primarily for destination organisations. So destination marketing organizations, management organizations, convention bureau, whatever the different names are around the world. And currently we have around 600 members and it's the actual organization that's the member so that everybody that works within the organization has access to all the tools, all the research, the education, everything that DI is basically creating because our main mission is to, to elevate destination organizations to be more relevant and have a bigger impact on the communities that they serve. So I, I joined just a year ago. It's a year and a couple of days. So it's been a it's a, been a pretty exciting journey because for me as well, I knew a bit about Destinations International, but it's certainly not not as much as as I know now. And certainly, I I appreciate the the added value that it can have for European DMOs. So. Well, we spoke probably about seven or eight, and possibly yeah, seven or eight months ago, when you were still shiny, brand new, still sparkling in this new role. Um, at that time, we spoke about we're in a post-COVID world, still are, but an immediate post-COVID world. And as far as destination management organisations, CVBs, as you say, whatever, whatever you want to call them, uh, everybody was talking very positively about well this has seen a sea change in the way that dmos are going to work you know they're going to see take more into account what residents what the communities want it's more about destination stewardship now than about destination marketing but that was nine months or six seven eight months ago whatever it was have things changed have, have we gone back to the status quo where you know because i go to press conferences all around the world and pre-COVID, all, all the DMOs wanted to talk about was how many beds had been filled, how many new bed spaces had been made in big hotels. And it was all about stats rather than about quality or, or you know, resident sentiment was not even th something that was even thought about. How, where are we at in Europe with those? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it definitely um, was a lot around the conversation of how do, how do we uh, do things better or build back better, all these hashtags that were going around. And I definitely feel from the European destinations that I'm speaking to, and they were possibly maybe more of the innovators as well that have joined my uh, group of pathfinders, which we'll maybe talk about shortly. But certainly the shift from marketing to management, instead of marketing as many people as you can into your destination, you're really looking at the community that lives there and, and what do they need. KPIs certainly have to change. So as long as we're as long as destinations are, are being measured on number of bed nights and spend, so this, the, perhaps the consumption element, but um, things maybe won't change in destinations. They really need to be looking at how do we should go from per, perhaps consumption to value creation. And that is certainly a conversation that we're having at the moment. We need to look at new metrics, different, different KPIs to really be able to demonstrate what the visitor economy actually results in. And it might be economy, but also it can help really with changing society and, and helping to address some of the gaps perhaps in, in communities. And this is a really exciting movement that we're on. So perhaps I would say maybe some convention centers, perhaps maybe some hotel have gone back to actually we we've, we've had a few years where we've not had any visitors and now we really need to recoup and now we just need to fill as many rooms as as we can but the dmos that i'm speaking to are on a different level of engagement when it comes to really listening to their citizens really engaging with their stakeholder community 
uh, and almost beyond the tourism stakeholder community to really play that bigger facilitative role of how do we connect, you know, the quadruple helix as we talk about, how do we connect citizens, how do we connect academia, how do we work with government and also businesses within the destination that we are we are working for. So lots of really positive stories that we've been sharing across Atlantic from North America across to Europe. It's been a, a brilliant journey so far. It all sounds very positive, but what are the frustrations? In my experience, when I've spoken to DMOs in the past, uh, if you speak to the DMO uh, executive team or anybody in it, they're all very positive about these things. You know, they can embrace them. But often the board of directors for these DMOs are peppered with people that have a vested interest, like hoteliers, like attraction owners, who are under pressure themselves to produce bottom lines, to reduce costs, get more people in beds, as we said, get me more people through the door. Um, how? What are your frustrations when you deal with this concept? Yeah, at the moment, we are having lots of discussions around what are the challenges, what are the gaps, how can Destinations International support European DMOs to help address some of these challenges? We're looking at what are the strengths in North America, what are the strengths in Europe, how can we learn from one another? So we're having very open dialogue about these things. Within Destinations International, a large focus is around advocacy. So we're looking at how can what's happening in North America and the great work that Jack and the team are doing, how can that translate to really help European destinations, bearing in mind there's so many countries, cities, regions we're dealing with. But when it comes to really either inspiring board members or stakeholders to really understand the true value, we, we do know that there's a gap in, in an understanding of what a DMO does and also the power of the visitor economy, the power of conferences. So there are, there are certainly uh, challenges around that to, for people to really understand what it means so it's not it's not all it's not all rosy but we're certainly on a, a journey and the more the visitors really ask for you know sustainable options and I, I, Expedia Media and Group Solutions shared on one of the the calls that we had shared that I think it's 70 percent of people from this from a survey they did are really looking for sustainable options and um, and feel that destinations need to do more so as long as we're on this journey of the consumer is also wanting more from the destination, the destination needs to engage more in a broader um, looking outside perhaps the usual suspects to see how can they how can they support the visitor economy and how can they make sure that they're bringing the right visitors for their for their destination. But so there are a lot of really good discussions around that. Now you have uh, you've been working on specific projects. You have a number of what you refer to as Pathfinder DMOs. Are there any actual practical steps that you share with these DMOs? Like, you you know, if you want to do this, you should be doing A, B or C. Uh, here's a strategy. Here's this. Here's that. Or do you just generally give advice? At the moment, it's been knowledge sharing. We've been uh, I've been on a bit of a listening tour, trying to understand the challenges for European destinations. And our goal from this project is to try and come up with three to five tools, services, um, whatever whatever it may be that is not there at the moment that could really help European destinations and their in their goals and in their mission. So we're still uncovering what they are. Um, as I said, we've you know we've been talking about some challenges and some gaps and then we really need to consider can we support this through the foundation or is there something that we can do with a broader community that could help? So we're not quite at the stage of saying this is what you need to do because there's there's a lot of learnings um, still to be still to be had across uh, from North America to Europe, and then for us to be able to take all that away and say, okay, what are the next next steps with some of these challenges to to move the needle on that? Okay, a couple of final questions. Have you come across uh, in your travels around Europe a tourist board or a DMO, whatever again, whatever you want to call them, that has surprised you by either way? One is. Christ, they know where they're, well, they're already at this stage. You know, this is a model. This is a, we could use this as a role model. And equally, if you come across tourist boards where you think, oh, dear, dear, dear me, you know, we've got a long way to go here. Yeah, I mean, there's, for sure, there is a, there is a journey and everybody's at a different stage on that journey. You know, one of our members is Belcher Ireland and they were set up in 1952 and you hear how they've developed over the years and, 
you know, think pitfalls and how they came over that. And it's wonderful to really hear these great stories and the stage that they're at now is, is pretty remarkable. And then you've got other DMOs that we're talking about in, for example, in Turkey, they just uh, opened their DMO a couple of years ago. So they're at a completely different stage. So I, I think by having this open, open, transparent sharing that I feel perhaps DMOs didn't do before to the same extent, really understanding what do they need to do and how can they learn from each other. Uh, we've then got the Netherlands who shared in one of the calls that we did, you know, their um, 2030 agenda and how they're really looking at what, what, what is important to the Netherlands and what's key to them and how can they really connect their cities, how can they connect their regions, how can they empower everyone to connect more with citizens, a lot more around that and really, you know, different kinds of marketing, maybe marketing only to um, places that can come to the Netherlands by train, for example. So there's, I don't think I can pinpoint one, but it's really interesting to have these stories and to hear what different destinations are doing. You know, Athens have just set up this Greek meetings alliance. They didn't have anything like that before. So you see communities coming together to uh, to really look at how can they how can they elevate their whole destination and also, you know, the capacity building initiatives that are happening in, in different areas and different destinations as well is, is pretty impressive. So uh, there's we've got 13 pathfinders that are on this journey and each of the calls that we have, there's different case studies that are shared. And we're going to pull together these case studies and some of the great stories and outcomes and potentially challenges and gaps as well um, into a white paper that we're going to present at IMEX in Frankfurt. So there should be a lot more a lot more meat to be able to, to share there. But um, Graham, there's it's definitely a journey for them all. Um, and there's challenges throughout that. Um, I do believe that there's similar challenges globally and, and everybody is just trying to, to figure out what's worked, you know, in LA and how have they managed to do that? And how could I maybe take the learnings through to Barcelona to slightly look at challenges a little bit differently? Or how do we really work with stakeholder engagement? And if it if I'm hitting roadblocks as I go along, what, what's my next tactic? And yeah. how can we learn? And how can DI really support or enable these connections, but also then look at what are we already offering that is of, of great value to our 600 plus members and how could that perhaps be adapted slightly to really add good value to to Europeans? So it's um, it's a it's a it's a it's a process. Um, it's not a certain it's an, it, overnight fix. It, uh, uh, yeah, I find it fascinating because obviously there's not only the the these sort of common themes, but of course you have to deal with cultural changes. Like for example, the people that run visit Florence in Italy. Are probably completely different animals from the people that say run visit Denver in Colorado, you know, and they face different challenges, although there is some commonality. But I'm assuming that most of a lot of this will be discussed at your annual conference in Dallas in in uh, in halfway through the year. I can't remember when it is June or July or whenever it is, uh, which so that should be very interesting. And I'd imagine you'd welcome as many DMOs there as possible. Um, thank you for your time, Jane. I, I, I found it very interesting. Um, I'm hoping our audience will find it more interesting than your guest on the sofa behind you. <laughs> we should let He's sleeping dogs lie. Back. We should <laughs> let sleeping dogs lie, I think. We absolutely should. <laughs> Thank you, Graham. Great talking to you and hope to see you at annual convention. It's the 18th to the 20th of July in Dallas. There you go.